Welcome to the 2021 OnFarm Network Results Series. I'm Megan Burns, agronomist for the OnFarm Network program. We've been conducting single and double inoculant trials in soybeans for a number of years now. Let's focus in on our soybean double inoculant results from 2021. So double inoculant trials compare soybeans with a single inoculant applied on the seed to soybeans with a double inoculant, so on seed inoculant plus usually granular in furrow inoculant in addition to the inoculant on the seed. In these trials, we're interested in quantifying nodulation, yield, and we've added seed quality analysis uh, as well. So there's a minimum two year soybean history required for fields to be considered for this trial type. So this is important. Um, before we look at reducing our inoculant management strategy, we have to provide a double inoculation and have good, well-nodulated soybean crops um, as history in our fields to build up our rhizobium population before we look at reducing that input. So soybean rhizobium, as we know, is not um, native to our Manitoba soils here. Obviously, we need to then introduce it, which is what we're doing through the practice of inoculation. So we look for a minimum two-year history that's two well-nodulated soybean crops sometime in the last 10 years on the fields that are going to be hosting um, these trials. So these are the locations of our 2021 double inoculant trials. There were seven of them this year. Um, generally speaking, and, and this played out this year as well, uh, double inoculant trials are usually focused in Western Manitoba for the most part, um, just where soybean production is still relatively newer compared to the Eastern half of the province. And this is a bit more of a, a relevant or timely question um, out West. So that's how we see our, our trial locations kind of shaking out um, over time. So nodulation ratings are obviously a really important part of these trials, right? We wanna look at nodulation in the double and single inoculated treatments um, to see whether the two strategies are resulting in any sort of different nodulation. So this is our rating scale that we use. We look at plant growth and vigor. So how does the above ground biomass of the plant appear? Um, we do our nodule counts. So digging up the plants and looking at how many nodules are present. So you'll see the rating for this between zero and four show um, in our, um, in our results that we'll get to in a minute. Um, and then we also look at nodule position. So where the nodules are located on the roots, um, which can be indicative of where the, the rhizobia are coming from, whether it's inoculant or soil. Um, we can give you some hint as to that, but we're gonna focus on how many nodules are present. So that nodule number that indicates whether or not we would consider um, there to be an agronomically sufficient amount of nodulation to meet our soybean nitrogen needs. So this is what you'll see in the, in the results tables um, in just a minute. So before we get into the individual trial results, um, just some general notes on nodulation from 2021. Um, obviously it was dry. It was very dry in 2021, we know this. Um, so we saw flowering on some pretty stressed little plants um, in some cases at pretty early V stages. Um, and nodulation overall seemed to be just uh, lower maybe this year, still agronomically sufficient, um, not concerningly low in most cases, um, but it did seem generally lower was an observation and generally slower to develop. And that was likely because of the dry conditions. So still, like I mentioned, as you'll see, we, we achieved what we, be, we would consider agronomically sufficient nodulation in all of these trials. So that means, you know, on average, our plants have at least 10 nodules, um, which is equivalent to uh, kind of anywhere between a two and a three um, on our nodulation scale here. Um, typically, what we see in our trials is, is anywhere between three and four, and we'll take a look at what that looks like in our individual results. So starting with the first trial here, um, we had agronomically sufficient nodulation above three here, um, and it was very, very similar between our double and single inoculated treatments, not seeing much in the way of difference there in terms of nodule number. Um, and then as would maybe be expected, there's no significant yield difference between those two inoculant uh, treatments. And as a result, uh, our change in profit per acre when there's no uh, yield difference between the single and double treatments um, is going to be reflective of, of the loss in profit per acre equivalent to that increased cost of that granular inoculant going in furrow. Um, so we have about a $10 hit to the bottom line there because we're not getting any return on investment, so to speak, in terms of improved yield with that double inoculant practice. So the second trial, um, we also had very similar and sufficient nodulation between the two treatments. And again, we're not seeing a significant yield difference and we have that associated loss in profit per acre as a result. So at the third trial, we had um, a little bit better nodulation. We hit a 4.0 on the scale, and obviously it was the same between double and single inoculated soybeans at this site. 
we're not getting that significant yield difference at all. And we have the associated loss in profit per acre with the double inoculant treatment as a result. And then same story at the next trial here. Uh, so we're not seeing a significant yield difference um, and we have very, well, the same nodulation rating between double and single inoculant trials. And that's certainly agronomically sufficient um, in the extent of nodulation. Um, at our next trial, uh, a little bit lower nodulation here again, um, but very similar, the same between our, our inoculant treatments, uh, no significant yield difference, and then a decrease, decrease in profit per acre as a result of that increased input cost without any return at harvest time. Okay, now this trial behaved a little bit differently than the rest. So here we see that nodulation ratings were, um, again, uh, agronomically sufficient, and they were the same between the double and single inoculated treatments. However, we did have a, single, uh, a significant yield difference. So our double inoculant treatment significantly increased yield compared to the single inoculant treatment that looked like about 2.2 bushels per acre. And it was an economic decision to go with a double inoculant for this trial, and that's it was economic whether you look at kind of more conservative long-term sort of average prices for soybean, or if the, you look at those more reflective, uh, at least a little bit more reflective of what current conditions for prices might be. So it was certainly an economic decision here. Um, now, uh, we aren't too sure why this is the case, um, and, and this will be similar to what we see uh, with other significant response that we'll look at um, in our across the network section in just a minute here. Um, but there isn't anything kind of uh, overtly obvious uh, about the management history at this this field, um, whether it's you know history soybean history and, and the um, the extent of that history or how recent that history was on this field. Um, it, it fit the bill with uh, a minimum of two well nodulated soybean histories in the last ten or soybean fields in the last ten years, and it had pretty recent history. Um, the last soybean crop was just a couple of years ago. Um, and that's very similar to what we see in our other double inoculant trials. There wasn't anything very obvious in terms of differences in management um, decisions in this uh, growing season or anything like that. So there's nothing super obvious that sets us apart that would, would have given us an indication or a hint as to um, why this one had a significant yield difference. Um, but it's something that we're obviously going to continue to explore moving forward is trying to really zone in on where do those differences actually take place? But we'll look at the frequency of response um, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a minute. Um, okay, so at the final trial, uh, we're back to what we saw at most of the others. So we have a little bit lower nodulation here, but still agronomically sufficient. Pretty similar again between the treatments, um, no significant difference in yield between single and double treatments. And we have our associated loss and profit breaker as a result. So, if we pull all of this together and look at results across the network of all of our soybean double inoculant trials to date, um, we've had 46 trials so far, and that's with our proper minimum two-year field history that we require. And we've only had two yield increases with double inoculants. So that one that we saw from this year is up in the Dauphin area, and then we've had another one um, uh, over just north of Winnipeg here. Um, so that's a pretty low frequency of response, right? We're talking about 4% of the time that we're seeing a significant increase in yield with that double inoculant that is um, also economic. Um, so the increase in yield is enough to offset that increased cost. So we're talking about yield increases between one and a half and 2.2 bushels across those two trials. Um, and again, we, we don't know, like factoring in that second trial that had significant response um, previously in the network, um, it's a very similar story to what we saw this year. Like there's no obvious management um, changes or field history differences. Um, there was really similar nodulation in both cases uh, between the double and single treatments within each trial. Um, so, so this is something that I think we need. Uh, it comes down to, you know, having more trials in, in more places so that we can maybe see where um, uh, significant increases with double inoculant are taking place as we have more than just two trials to work with to try and find similarities across them and be able to better predict maybe the conditions um, under which uh, that double inoculant is important um, to have even when we have our, our, our soybean field history built up. So this is a trial type that we'll look to continue forward with growers who are interested in and uh, hopefully um, kind of zone in on some of those differences and, and, and be able to better predict uh, where they occur. But keep in mind, 
but 96% of the time, we're not seeing a significant yield increase at all with that double inoculant practice compared to single where we have built up some soybean history and have at least two well-nodulated soybean crops in the last 10 years. So a big thank you to all of our on-farm network participants. If you're interested in learning more, getting involved, or if you have a trial idea, please contact us at any time. Thank you.